Number eight. Suppose the ski patrol lowers a rescue sled and victim, having a total mass of 90 kilograms down a 60 degree slope at constant speed as shown in figure 7.36. The coefficient of friction between the sled and the snow is 0.1. Letter A. How much work is done by friction as the sled moves 30 meters along the hill? All right. So first things first. All right. Let's start with the question. It's asking us how much work is done by friction. Now, just by given right the, the picture up here on the top right, and just by the nature of, you know, they're talking about frictional forces and so on and so forth, most likely they're looking for us to take work and relate it to force somehow. So I'm thinking about using this formula right here on the right-hand side. And the reason why I want to try to think about how to answer the question first with a formula is because it'll give me better direction in terms of what to look for. All right, so let's write this, that the work uh, due to friction, let me use that as a capital. So the work due to friction, okay, will equal the force due to friction multiplied by the distance the object traveled, multiplied then by the cosine of the angle between the force of friction vector and the distance vector or displacement vector. Okay, so now in order for me to calculate this, I know I need to know these pieces. All right, so we'll take it one by one. The force of friction, do we know it? No, right? We don't know it. They didn't tell it to us off the bat. Okay, so what that means is let me go hunting, right? I'm going to see if I can find that. So this picture looks, right? I mean, similar to ones we have done. It's basically like a moving body on an inclined plane. So how do we do problems like that? Well, I like to organize my axes, right? So that I have my x-axis parallel or roughly parallel to the um, slope, all right? And then my y-axis would be perpendicular, obviously, to that x-axis. So I'm thinking maybe something about there. That looks pretty good, all right? So just realize that this up here is my x, all right? And this is my positive y. All right, so now knowing that, let's try to get to work. So how do I, here's the force of friction, right? Here, I mean, they even told it to us, but we don't even have to really know that necessarily. The, the object here, well, the object, it's a person on a, it's a victim on a sled. So he or she is moving down um, this direction, down the slope. So remember, friction always opposes the motion. And therefore, if this is the motion, then friction better is, better be pointing the other way, right? I was gonna, that was a combination between better be and is, all right? So better be uh, pointing the other direction. All right, so we know that the force of friction will be right here. Let's draw that in, okay? So this is force, force of friction. All right, now I'm thinking to myself, well, all right, let me give, I'm gonna give myself a little bit of space over here, all right, so I can fill in. Um, but I'm thinking to myself, well, do I know any formulas for force of friction? Well, yeah, right, we know there's kinetic and static. Well, what type of friction is it in this problem? You might look back to here, but they don't tell us, but it's, it's kinetic, right, because there's motion. So the force of kinetic friction is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by the normal force. Okay, so in order to find this now, right, so notice now I'm, I'm kind of, it's like kind of peeling an onion, right? First I start on the upper layer. Then I realize in order to find work, I gotta know these three things. And then I say, all right, let me pick the first one. And I'm like, oh, well, I don't know, I don't know that yet. So then I peel back another layer, right? So now I'm looking at the force of friction and it's kinetic friction. So then I go to this formula. Right? And then I'm looking and I'm saying, well, do I know these pieces? I know the coefficient of kinetic friction. They told it to me, 0.1. But then do I know the normal force? Mm, they didn't tell it to me. So now I got to go hunting again, right? Or I got to peel another layer off of the onion. So somehow now my question turns to be, how do I find the, co how do I find the normal force? All right, well, we have to remember back to, what was it, chapter four? Um, the normal force right, is the force that the uh, plane is applying to the person, right? It's the perpendicular force of motion here. So the normal force is pointing this direction. This is the normal force. Okay, well, what, so if there is a force um, in the positive y direction, right, and there are no accelerations because I said it's constant speed, so there's no accelerations then in the negative, uh, excuse me, no accelerations overall, 
then we know there must be a missing, right, y component, okay, negative y component here. And we know that this negative y component better be equal but opposite in magnitude to the normal force. Well, what is this component over here? Well, this component pointing down is a component of the weight of the object, right? So notice this makes a nice little triangle here, okay? And these are just the components. This one right here is the negative y component of the weight. And this one right here would be the negative x component of the weight, right? Okay, great. Now, uh, here's the question. In order to use, right, in order to find the components, we kind of need to know some angles in here. So do you know what that angle is? Well, you might say, yeah, it's 60. I think it's 60, right? Doesn't it match this? And I'll say, no, you're definitely right. Right, but think about it this way. It's easy to tell. So let's draw this little triangle, okay? There's a 90 degree angle here. They said that this angle right here is 60. So what does that make this angle? That angle's 30, right? Okay, keep that in mind. We just found, we just found this angle, okay? Now, realize, remember that there is a 90 degree angle between the x and the y axis. So if this thing is 90, and you know that this piece in here is 30, then what is the missing piece? Easy, 60, right? So we know that. All right, so now we can do a little Sokotoa. Okay, so what I'm thinking now is I have to try to find the normal force, and the normal force is connected to the negative y component of the weight. So somehow I have to find the y component. You see, I'm peeling back another layer of the onion. So let's go on down here to the bottom. All right, so why don't we do this? Um, let's do, what do we got here? So let's do uh, cosine, right? Because here's the hypotenuse, the weight. I know the angle, I'm looking for the side adjacent. Therefore, I'm gonna use cosine. So I have cosine then of 60 degrees will equal negative W sub Y all over the weight. All right, so just solve this thing for W sub Y. Okay, so W sub Y, and I'm gonna distribute the negative. Okay, we'll equal then negative W times cosine of 60. Remember, W is just the weight, okay? So now this is great. Now remember, this value is equal in magnitude, but opposite in sign of the normal force, right? It shows it right here in the picture. Same magnitude. Why? Because there's no acceleration, so the sum of the forces must be zero in the y direction. So these better be equal, but opposite in magnitude. Okay, excuse me. <laughs> they better be equal in magnitude, but opposite in sign. All right? So basically what I'm going to do now is take this value and plug in the positive version into there. So now what does that get me? So then I guess me that the force of kinetic friction is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied now by the weight times cosine of 60. Interesting, okay, and then what does that do for me? Well now this helps me, actually let me just box this part, this helps me now do what? Now I can connect it back because this is the force of friction. So now I can connect it back to that, okay? So now I'm gonna take this and plug it in here. You see? I'm putting the onion back together. So here now, the work due to friction is equal to now the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by the weight times cosine of 60, okay? Now times the distance, all right? So what's the distance that the object traveled? Right, in this case, the person on the slide, where they told us it travels 30 meters. Okay, so that's a 30. And then multiplied now by the cosine of the angle between the force vector and the distance vector, or the displacement vector. So look, guys, force of friction is pointing this direction, right? It's pointing that way. The uh, motion of the object is down here. So what's the angle between these two? Looks like 180 degrees to me, right? So there it is. This value right here is cosine of 180. So just plug it all in. So the work due to friction is gonna be equal to, well, let me plug in some values here, right? The um, coefficient of kinetic friction they told us was 0 0.100. The weight is simply mg, so the mass, which was 90 times 9.80 times then 
right, cosine of 60 times 30 times the cosine of 180. All right, so the work due to friction is going to be equal to, now we can plug it all in. So 0.1 times 90 times 9.8 times cosine of 60 times 30 times cosine of 180. So negative, so right, so negative, negative 1.2, uh, excuse me, 1.32 times 10 to the third. And that's in joules. All right. So that's the work due to friction. All right. So that takes care of letter A. Now let's see if we can take a look at letter uh, B. So letter B, it says, how much work is done by the rope on the sled in this distance? All right. So uh, let's start. Okay. So where is B? Let me just change the colors. So here, let's do B. So um, again, we want to find the work. Most likely we're talking about this formula over here on the right-hand side. So let's write it down. Okay. So the work done by the rope is equal to the force on the rope times the distance the object traveled multiplied by the cosine of the angle between the force vector and the distance vector. Okay, I know I keep saying distance vector and technically distance does, isn't a vector, it's a scalar and should be displacement. I know, but I'm being a little sloppy here with the terms, but I think you guys know what I mean. So um, the work, okay, so in order to find the work, I need to know these variables. All right, and it seems like let's just take it piece by piece. Do I know the force that the rope is applying, a.k.a. do I know the tension? I mean, I don't know right off the bat, right? I don't. So my job now is to find this. Okay, so how do we find that? Well, where is the, f where is the tension or the force of the rope? Right? They're basically the same thing. Well, look, it's pointing in the same direction as the frictional force was, right? Okay, so now... Here's the thing. We have to now take this, in order to find this, we have to now think of this as a sum of the forces problem, right? Because we do have a bunch of forces acting in the x direction. All right. So why don't we write down, so in order to get to this, okay, let's take a step back and let's say, well, the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to max. Okay, now what is the acceleration in the x direction? Well, it's zero. Why? Because the thing is at constant speed. So therefore, the sum of the forces in the x direction will be equal to zero. Okay, now what are the forces in the x direction in the problem? Well, we have this tensional force, right? Or I call it the force of the rope. All right, that's pointing in the positive x. I also have a, a force of friction, right? Pointing in the positive. Uh, x direction. And I also have an x component to the weight down here. Mm, right, so that's pointing in the uh, negative x direction. I'm going to leave out the negative sign for now. I'm just going to put in the plus sign. You'll see I'm going to work the negative when I do my Sokotoa here, okay? So it doesn't matter as long as you don't do it both ways, and then it, and then it will become a true positive. You'll see what I mean in a second. So plus then the uh, plus then the uh, x component of the weight, and that should all equal zero. All right. Well, the only thing I'm not too sure of is this, right? I don't have a value for this. Okay. I do know the force of friction, right? We found it before. Well, we didn't actually calculate it, but uh, I could just calculate it over here, right? Plugging in the numbers. So um, why don't we look to see if we can try to pin this one down? Maybe I should relate this to the weight. All right. That might, that sounds like an idea. So why don't we do that? So take a look up here at the triangle. Right? I know the hypotenuse, I know this angle, I'm looking for the side opposite, therefore that's sine. So let me do the work over here. All right, so I have uh, sine, sine of 60 is equal to negative w sub x, that's the opposite side over the hypotenuse, which is the weight. Solve for w sub x, okay, and distribute the negative, and then it's negative w sine of 60. Now what I'm going to do is take this value, and now I can plug that in, right, for w sub x. So let's write it out. So I got then the force of the rope plus the force of friction minus w, the weight times the sine of 60, better equal zero. 
Okay, so now just solve for this, right? So if we solve for that, it becomes the force of the rope will be equal to W sine of 60 minus the force due to friction. And that is, right, the weight is mg, so that's 90.0 times 9.8 times then the sine of 60 minus the force due to friction, right? And the force due to friction is simply uh, coefficient of kinetic friction, as I'm showing over here, right? Coefficient of kinetic friction, which is, uh, what is that? Uh, 0 0.1, okay, 0 0.100 0, 0, multiplied by the weight again, right? So the weight again is 90.0 times 9.8, oh boy, running out of space, times then cosine, cosine of 60. Sorry about that, guys, for running out of space. And now, let's see uh, what we, how we, we just calculate it now, right? Should be fairly straightforward. So 90 times 9.8 times the sine of 60, Okay, take that value and subtract now. Subtract 0.1 times 90 times 9.8 times cosine of 60. And this works out to be now seven, yeah, two, three significant figures, so 720. So the force in the rope is gonna be equal to 720 Newtons. Okay, so that works. So now I know the force in the rope. So now what I can do is take this value and plug that bad boy on in here, right? Let me just give myself a little more room. So I can take that and plug it in right there. Great. Do I know the distance the object travels then? But yeah, it said 30 meters. Okay, and what's the angle between them? Well, remember, the tension is pointing up here, right? Tension is there. The motion is down here. What's the angle between them? Looks like 180 to me. So let's just solve now. So the work, the work that the rope does will be equal to 720, okay, times the distance, which was 30 meters, times the cosine of 180 degrees. So the work that the rope does is going to be equal to 720 times 30 times cosine of 180. So negative 2.16, so we got negative 2.16 times 10 raised to the, it looks like four, right? And that's in joules, okay? So that looks great. So that would be the answer to B. All right, problem is half over, joy. So C, what is the work done by the gravitational force on the sled? All right, so the gravitational force. So, um, Let's just start with the formula again. All right, let's start with this formula. So in order to find the work due to gravity, I have to know the force due to gravity, and then I have to know the distance the object travels, and then I have to know the angle between the distance and the force vector, okay? So what's the force due to gravity? Don't overthink it too much. Remember, force due to gravity is the weight of the object and weight is always mg, okay? So let's just plug that in. So the work due to gravity will be equal to the mass times 9.8, right? And the mass of the person is 90, okay? Times 9.8, times then the distance, okay? Which was 30. Just running out of space, so I'm gonna put the last part down here. Times then the cosine of the angle between them. Now here, look back up at the picture. Where's gravity acting? it always remember acts straight down. Okay, so gravity is acting here. Where's the motion? Here. So what's the angle in here? What's this angle? Should be 30, right? Should be 30 because here's the 60. This creates a 90 degree angle, so the remainder is 30. Okay, easy peasy, so cosine of 30. So now the weight, uh, excuse me, the, um, Hold on one second. The work due to gravity will be equal to, all right? Now here's the thing, just always keep this in mind. So 90 times 9.8 times 30 times cosine of 30. So this is 2.29, all right? 2.29 times, times 10, times 10 uh, raised to the, 
what is that? Uh, fourth, right? Three, four. Yeah, times 10 to the fourth, and that's in terms of joules. Okay, so that looks great to me. All right, so that looks good. Okay, perfect. So now, um, so that's great, and that takes care of letter C. And then finally, letter D, what is the total work done? So in order to think about total work done, I'll put D right here, we don't have to overthink it too much, all right? So the total, remember, work is equal to force times distance times the cosine of the angle between the two. So in order for there to be a work, there has to be a force, all right? In order for there to be total work done on the system, there has to be a total net force on the system. But is there a net force on the system? Remember, if there were a net force, the sum of the forces in whichever direction should equal mass times some acceleration. This has to be a value other than zero. But is there any accelerations in the problem? Well, no, it said that it's moving at constant speed. So if it's moving at constant speed, this whole thing goes to zero, and the sum of the forces is zero, and therefore the net force is zero. And if the net force is zero, that's zero. And if this is zero, then this is zero. And if that's zero, this is zero. And if that's zero, then the answer's zero. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. That would be awesome. We're so thrilled. I think right now we have like 40 some odd subscribers and it's just, it's so cool. I really, I um, it makes us know that we're doing something right. So I really do appreciate it very much. And um, I definitely appreciate your time. Thank you so much for checking out our videos. Take care.